Hi guys and welcome to another video on my channel and you can see we have the FreeFly VR Beyond. This is the all new 2016 version of FreeFly's virtual reality smartphone headset. So this is about a year on from the originals coming out. Um, I was fortunate enough to bump into the guys at FreeFly VR on their stand at the UK Drone Show. Uh, really nice guys, they were able to uh, have a chat with me about various things that I was doing involving the DJI Osmo Mobile and the Fair Tech SPG work that I was doing. Um, and they said, uh, you know, what about one of these? Would you be interested in doing a video? They gave me one of the boxes and I said, yeah, fantastic. Sounds good to me. Um, indeed, at the time of writing, I don't think it was even released. I think they were released officially on the 7th of December. So very, very new. Probably one of the first reviews of this uh, headset, on, certainly in the UK at least. Um, so yeah, they will be available by the time this, uh, this video has come out, hopefully. But with that all said, let's take a look at what you get in the box. So there you have it, outside the box, the FreeFly VR Beyond. So as you can see, if you compare these to the older version, um, very similar in many respects, but there are lots of subtle differences. Now I'm gonna go through all of the various features as if you don't know the originals. Um, I, ha I never owned the originals myself. I've only had my hands on them once, I believe. But what's nice to see is that everything from the originals is kind of there already, but everything that was, I wouldn't say necessarily bad about the originals, but certainly some of the things that were noticeably it needed improvement about the originals has been thought out and this is what I really do like about this headset is that it's really well thought through the biggest problem with headsets like this is the smartphone itself catering for every smartphone on the market is nigh on impossible so what the manufacturers of all of these things need to do is they need to think about you know the largest percentile that they can cover for and what these guys at FreeFly VR have done certainly in the original design and more so in this design is that they've really opened it up to as many possible users as there can be. People like Samsung obviously came out with the uh, the Samsung Gear VR. Now that was great if you owned a Samsung S6 or S7 or S6 Edge, but unfortunately it completely alienated most other users of other smartphones, especially the iPhone market. These guys, these will fit the iPhone, these will fit Android phones. They've got different apps and different variants for each one. And the experience that you enjoy through these will really depend on the app as opposed to the actual gear. All this is is a tool for being able to plug in your phone and then you just go online and you find the content that you want to use. Now what's really nice about this is that FreeFly VR they haven't just stopped at that they haven't said well this is a tool for you to be able to mount your phone into this and that's no longer it. What they're actually doing is they're working with app developers to try and use some of the extra features that I'll show you in a moment to increase the experience and hopefully grow a large community so more people can enjoy you know the likes of games and the likes of actual apps that have settings and functions that don't involve you removing your phone from the device. So let's get into those features now. So the first thing that we're going to look at is just the area around the goggles. Now you can see here that once again there is a nice faux leather with padding on there. Now the difference between these and the originals is that there is a perforation to this. So the originals had kind of a solid block of faux leather. The problem with that of course is if you have it on your head for an extended period of time what you would find is it would get very sweaty. These are actually breathable so it will actually allow some of the heat out and also there are areas like this, the ventilation here and also on the side here which means that you're going to not have so much of a problem in terms of misting up and fogging up now if you're in an indoor environment just maybe watching a movie that's not going to be a major problem but certainly if you're outside in the cold that's always been a problem for any headset that you wear on your head I for one do first person view flying I have fat shark goggles that's a constant problem with fat shark goggles um, they've tried to integrate things like fans into them it's still an issue it's not going to be completely resolved by any of this but it's nice to see that that's one thing that they have considered with these goggles. So now let's look at the mounting system, um, very similar to the way it was before. So to open up the headset, you just pull this little thing here. And then as you can see, you've got two areas. So if I just put it around this way, so our nose would be going into this recess here. Obviously you've got the two lenses. So anyone who doesn't know how VR on a phone works, all it is, is you have your phone and basically the application, the video, whatever you're watching or using splits image down the middle. So you have a left image and a right image. And then when you put your phone in this device, it will split that image and your one eye will look at the left, one eye will look at the right. Depending on what you're viewing, if it's a proper 
3D application or a proper 3D video, it will be shot using two cameras. So one will be slightly further away from the, the right one, exactly the way that the human eye works. And that then allows you to get depth perception. So if you've got a different image on your left eye than you have on your right eye, you can use triangulation. And that's what gives you the ability to, to do that. Now also, of course, with smartphones, you've got the accelerometers, the gyroscopes. So when you actually have this against your head, you can move your head around and it will actually move the image for you depending on what you're viewing. Anyway, that's kind of more about the VR itself. Let's just see how these actually go together. So what we need to do is we need to get our phone obviously with the screen facing the lenses. So they need to be mounted to that. So we've got a couple of orange lines here. We've got one down the center line here and we've also got this one here. And basically what we need to do is we need to get our phone central on that. So to do that, you can see I'm using an iPhone 6 in a rather massive armored case. And if I just lay it down on that, you can see, oh dear, we've got some problems, it doesn't fit. Now, yes, you can move these up and down, but um, that's gonna be a bit of an issue. However, just like the originals, what's really nice about this is if we go onto the front and we press this orange tab here, boom, the sides immediately go springing out, all spring loaded, and now we've got this massive area to place our phone on. So all I need to do is if I just go to an app that's running VR, so this is, for example, a YouTube video. Um, now I'm gonna want it so it's mounting to my nose upwards. So in other words, it would be this way round. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be about right. It will do an automatic flip around anyway on my phone. So I'm going to mount this like that. We wanna get the center of the image about there. We've got the orange center line here, wants to be about on the center of that image there. So we do that, and then what we can do is using these little knurled threads here, these are little rubber pads. So these rubber pads, which have got some grippers on them, will then spring load and push together. Now before I just do that, what I wanted to show you was the differences in these pads. Now on the old one, you only had this outer line here that you could slide these up and down on and they were kind of foam. What these are now is foam but they're all coated in rubber and this nice grippy material. So it's soft, it's springy, it's spongy but it's also very grippy. Now you've also got these inner bands as well so if your phone is smaller than something certainly the size of my phone in its case then you'd be able to unscrew these and you'd be able to move them onto these inner lines which would obviously mean that you get a better grip on your phone. So let's just pop the phone in there for the sake of it. So I would say something like about that would be fine and then I just close this up and you want to make it as tight as possible so you get that clunking noise and you can see now the phone won't fall out all by itself it's being held by these rubber pads and what's also nice and it's another feature that I really do like is it does leave the ports here available if you you know if you have a port that's there you would move this out slightly if you've got a port that's on the right you'd move this down slightly it means that i can get to the central port so i can actually charge this or i can plug something in with the iphone 7 for example if you want your headphones you've got to be able to get to your lightning port so you'd be able to do that so that's a nice design feature so all we then need to do is we just need to flip it over and close it up. Now, the one thing that you couldn't see there is that these hinges have actually got springs in them. So if I just open that up again, you'll see that when I, when I close it, because I've got quite a thick case, the spring in the hinge actually kicks in and that means that I get a nice seal on the phone without straining the hinge or anything like that. Now the other thing, if you find that the center of the screen is off, you can then undo these nuts and that what, what that means is that you can then move the entire case and phone left and right so you can kind of dial in the center. So there's so much capability for adjusting this and tweaking this to get the right image using the right phone that it's really versatile. And I really, really do think that that is excellent. That's something that's been properly thought through. That's people who have tried and tested it. And again, it caters to such a large market because you can put so many different shapes and sizes of phone. Now, if you want more specific details on what phones will fit or the size of phones, go to their, um, their website, Freefly, and um, they'll show you they've got a whole section on that and believe me there are a lot of phones that will fit in this device.
Okay, so that's all mounted up. You can see the head strap, much like the original one, very nice quality. We've got the overhead strap, that's very important to me. Uh, weight, obviously I'm using quite a heavy phone and a heavy case, so weight is very important. And if you don't have this upper head strap, then it's just gonna fall forwards on your nose. So no good for anyone there. So what I'll try and do now is just demonstrate um, what I'm gonna be using this for. Like I say, there's a variety of different applications. There's YouTube videos, there's movies I think are gonna be coming out soon. Um, there's applications, there's games that can be used for it. Um, now I personally am going to be using this for, predominantly for first person view flying. Um, I own a DJI Phantom and that has the DJI Go app. Now unfortunately, DJI have not built in a virtual reality application within that, however, a company called Litchi, which is a very popular application if you own a DJI Phantom, they have actually created a VR mode on their app, which means that I can literally fly my Phantom. Not only can I fly it whilst looking through VR goggles like this with a massive 120 degree field of view, but I can also fly it and use the head tracker to look around. So if I look left, then the Phantom will actually your left. If I look right, it will your right. If I look up and down, then the camera will pan and tilt based on that. So a really, really clever way of doing it. And it is a massively immersive feeling when you're actually flying like that. So that's one of the applications that I'm gonna be using it for. Um, I'll just demonstrate some of that now. So this is a little demonstration of me flying my DJI Phantom 4 using the FreeFly VR Beyond. Um, I've got my phone mounted inside the free flies. You can see the charge cable is plugged into it, it's coming out the side with no problems at all with it getting in the way. That then plugs into the Phantom controller where I would normally have the phone clipped onto it. Whereas with this setup, what I do is I go to the Litchi app. I can't use the DJI Go app, unfortunately. But within the Litchi app, I can literally press the little goggle set and then it will split the image side by side, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. And it will give me this virtual 3D environment. Now, this is fun, yes, but it's also very useful. Anyone who's flown first person view using a quadcopter, especially something like a DJI Phantom, will know how annoying reflection is on their tablet, on their phone. Many people will have a sun hood, but even that doesn't always stop it. And what's really lovely about these free flies is that it just gives me an option. If it's a really bright sunny day, if I'm really like key on getting a great shot and I need to be able to see what I'm looking at through the camera with no distortion, with no light, with no reflection, then I can literally just throw my phone into these, I can plug it in, and that gives me a really, really nice in-depth view. It's kind of the equivalent of standing in a darkened room with a cinema screen in front of you. There's no distractions, anything like that. And you can also tap into the accelerometers within the phone and join that with the Litchi app, which means when you look down, the camera tilts down. When you turn left, the actual aircraft will tilt left. It's just an immersive feel. Now I move on to something a little bit more fun. This is just me sitting in my kitchen slash study room and this is me just doing the GO4D space station game. Uh, all it is, you look down, that starts you walking and then you're supposed to walk around this space station gathering up little health packs which increase your time as you go along. Fun little game, just an example of one of the many different applications and games that are out there. And it kind of leads me on to say that ultimately what you use this for is going to very much depend on what you're interested in. What's great about this though, is even if you haven't got an interest or you haven't got something specific like say the Litchi app and flying a DJI Phantom 4, what's great is that owning one of these bits of kits really sets you up for the future. App developers are working a lot on VR. You've got all of these new VR cameras. You've got the Nikon 360. You've got the Ricoh one. You've got the Samsung 360. And YouTube themselves have completely adopted VR. You can go to a 360 VR video search on YouTube. You'll find hundreds of titles of people that have either got real world footage or they've got kind of generated computer rendered footage of roller coaster rides and stuff like that. They're silly little experiences. There's nothing particularly, you know, amazing about them, very similar in the way that the virtual reality for full bore computers are going with the Oculus Rift, is the platform's been developed, it now just needs people to create content that will really help. Now what's lovely about the FreeFly VR Beyond is that you're set up for the future. Even if it's a year's time and you have a new phone, you still know that your phone's going to fit in this device, you're still going to be able to run a cable to it if you need to, and you've also got the option of these little crossfire tabs as triggers, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. 
So we saw in that little demonstration of a game that I was playing that there was a giant retry button slap bang in the middle of the screen. Now the problem is with that when you're using a virtual headset like this is of course getting to the screen to press that reset button is very difficult to do. Now while it wasn't relevant on that actual game, what Freefly VR have done is that they have actually created two capacitive touch triggers which are there. These are the crossfire buttons as they call them. To show you what I mean, it's very simple actually, it's just a little spring-loaded button which takes the feeling all the way from your thumb through to this pad and then when you press it forward it will touch at a specific location on your phone. Now what that means is that app developers can decide what buttons correlate to which positions and of course you can then kind of customize them. So let's take for example a game you would maybe have this would be the fire button and this would be secondary fire or this would be the fire button this would be the reset button and by doing that way you never have to actually remove the phone to enjoy the experience of the game. This is just a demonstration, this is a standard YouTube video in VR mode and this has actually got two buttons in those locations, you've got the settings button and you've got the back button so that will actually go back to the normal video mode button. Not particularly useful when using you know this particular headset because you don't really want to get out of VR mode whilst you're watching it but it's just an example of all they need to do in the app to actually make this possible. So as we've seen, so for example if I go into settings on this you can see it says switch viewer so all they're going to need to do is make it possible to scan a QR code switch viewer and then that will basically dictate what those buttons do so maybe on a YouTube application that would turn this to a reset so that would actually replay the video or maybe this would skip to the next video it really comes down to the development of the app and what I like about the Freefly VR is that they've considered that they've considered about future proofing it about development in the future and they are also well aware that people who are buying stuff like that anyone who's going to buy a virtual reality headset for a phone is not someone who's usually going to be specifically investing in one thing I would use this 100% for flying the DJI Phantom I think that's an excellent application for it However, what I love about the fact that I've got this is that even if I don't use it much, I could just put it on a shelf and I can wait for an app or a video to come out that I can use it with and I can just pull it out and I can say, oh, I can use that. Now, what's great about the way that they've designed all of this, the fact you can use so many different phones in so many different sizes, that you can get to the charge points, everything like that, and the fact that it's got these buttons for future development is that they are now in a position where you can own this for a good number of years without the fear of having to replace it as the technology goes by. Like I say, it may be a case of you just sit this on your bench for a while and then in six months time suddenly something comes out that is compatible with virtual reality. The idea of the split screen and the left and the right image is not going to change so fundamentally you'll be able to throw your phone into this and you'll be able to enjoy that experience. You've also got to consider that 360 degree cameras are getting very popular. We've got the Samsung VR Gear 360, we've got the Nikon one that's just come out, we've got the Ricoh one. They're all in early development, they're still a little bit grainy they're still a little bit dodgy in terms of the actual kind of view that you get from it but they're very good they're very immersive and as that technology develops I think you're going to find that headsets like this are going to become more and more useful because more and more people will be posting content in that kind of 360. Imagine if you will a concert where they put a 360 camera and they play a concert you'll be able to put a set of headphones on you'll be able to grab the Freefly VR Beyonds off your shelf and you'll be able to throw your phone into it and you'll be able to enjoy potentially a live streaming concert where you're actually standing in the middle of the venue. Now that's something that you know a lot of people are experimenting with and I think it's another reason why something like this piece of kit is well worth investing in. For the money, I think this is kind of a, a slightly higher end compared to some. You can only spend about, you know, well between six and twenty pounds to get a virtual reality headset for a phone. But what you've got to bear in mind with this is you do get excellent comfort. You can wear it for a long time. I was wearing it for a good 15 plus minutes when I was flying my Phantom. I didn't have any misting, any fogging. I didn't feel it was uncomfortable. I didn't feel it was overweighing. It wasn't pressing down on my nose. There was plenty of space here. Ventilation was good. And I think for that reason, that's why I can really recommend this headset because it's just well thought out for all of those applications. So take a look at Freefly VR website by all means have a look at their apps if you've got an android phone you're going to have even more apps available to you as well and uh, hopefully this review has been helpful to anyone who's thinking of purchasing one